trap play inside. Here you see the lineman pulling around, and then good block by Johnson. Huge hole inside. That's what you do to a fast defense. Once again, crashing down from the end. Again, that time Cole, Cole is crashing down. They've got him inside in the trap. And a good block by the pulling Jeff Burke. Down to the goal line. Touchdown, Quincy Wilson. I'd be worried if I owned a couch in this town right now. <laughs> <laughs> Brad Cooper on to try the extra point. They needed just three plays after the fumble to go to 36 yards. Wilson, the five-yard touchdown run. I'm on one. You're watching college football on ESPN. The West Virginia Mountaineers are hosting the third-ranked Virginia Tech Hokies. Saturdays don't miss College Game Day, built by the Home Depot, every week at 10.30 a.m. It's 90 minutes of Chris Lee and Kirk from the site of the week's biggest matchup. They'll have previews of all the day's top games. That's College Game Day every Saturday on ESPN. We'll return to Morgantown right after this. Start of the second quarter here in Morgantown. Sean McDonough with Rod Gilmore, Craig James, and Sam Ryan. West Virginia leading 14 and nothing, and Virginia Tech about to punt. They turned it over in their first two possessions. And now here's Vinnie Burns, the junior from New Orleans, averaging 42 yards per punt. Got a great game against Syracuse in their last game, averaged 47 per kick. This is not a great punt that goes out of bounds with no chance for a return by Pac-Man Jones. Well, fellas, it was hard to know what to expect tonight. Virginia Tech certainly looks like an enormously talented team, but hadn't really been tested yet by the schedule. West Virginia looked great against Miami, lost to Cincinnati. How do you figure? Well, we know one thing. We know that West Virginia can run the football. There might have been a question beforehand, but they're doing it against a pretty good defense right now. How about Rasheed Marshall, the quarterback, four for four? He's throwing the football. He's not making mistakes. He's making good decisions. And I think, in my opinion, the speed of the defense at West Virginia has, has shocked me and Virginia Tech. The only two wins for West Virginia have been against East Carolina, a team that got its first win last weekend, and Rutgers. Here's a pass up in the air, broken up. Intended for K.J. Harris and Brandon Manning. The linebacker broke it up. We check our ESPN game track. Well, you talk about the first quarter. Virginia Tech turnovers. The pick by King got things going. And then the bad pitch on the fumble, Kevin Jones, loses that when they get it back, and it was all the running game. Yeah, it was the running game. And how about the offensive line? There's no penetration whatsoever in this game by Virginia Tech. And, and I think that's given the ability for the cutbacks and the bounces. Two tight ends in the game now for West Virginia on second and ten. Quincy Wilson, the lone back. He gets the call, had a nice hole. And good line surge as well, finally Mikel Bakey made the tackle on Wilson, but not before he picked up six to the 41-yard line. Somehow Virginia Tech has to just kind of, you know, catch a breath. It's almost like, let's regroup, fellas. We're on the road. We are now facing a team that has a lot of speed. I, I think you're right, and I think it would also help if you know, D'Angelo Hall got involved a little bit more. I think you're right, slow start for him, but if he picks it up, I think that'll help their defense. Timeout, called by Rasheed Start's Marshall, timeout. the second used by West, West Virginia. Virginia. First minute of the second quarter, Frank Beamer and the Hokies trailing 14 to nothing. After the West Virginia timeout, the Mountaineers looking at third down and four at their own 41-yard line, leading Virginia Tech 14 to nothing. Rasheed Marshall, now the shotgun, the option, the pitch, the first down and more. Quincy Wilson to the 48-yard line of the Hokies. And they caught them in a soft coverage, so they really had no support out there. You'll see them coming up. Now watch, look how far back all the coverage is out there. 
the support is way off and so the pitch was the perfect call against the perfect cover that's what the that's what going to the line of scrimmage looking at what the defense has if the play works you stick with it if it doesn't you get out of it 11 yard gain for wilson he is 56 yards rushing here's his backup kj harris Chopped down a nice open field play by Brandon Manning, the junior from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, who's been pressed for playing time now with the outside linebacker position by Aaron Rouse, a freshman who is coming on quickly. They have talent in both of those gentlemen. West Virginia is averaging about eight yards per play in this football game, which means they're not in those second and long and third and long situations. Rich Rodriguez acts as his own offensive coordinator. He calls the plays. A.J. Harris again, found a hole, squirted it through, first down. Oh, my goodness. They are just gashing them, Craig. Harris, the ball barrier. And, and, you know, let's just look. And when you see what's happening here, the guards, look at all the work that they have. There's, I mean, there's absolutely no problem with the slide through, the slither effect. Everybody's matching up, and there's no penetration, no push by Virginia Tech. A hat on a hat. An offensive line that has struggled with injuries all season long. It's really been the weakness of this football team. And a timeout called by Virginia Tech. Bud Foster not accustomed to seeing this from his talented defensive unit. Each team with one timeout remaining in the half, still 13.04 left. It's a 40-yard try. Robert Peasley, the holder. Worley's had a bit of a bad back lately. He hooked that one. No good. Wide to the left. The frustration continues for the Hokies here in Morgantown. Carter Worley, a miss of a 40-yard field goal try. And not much has gone right for Virginia Tech so far. But a long way to go in this one. More than six minutes left in the first half. West Virginia with the ball and a 14 and nothing lead. The Mountaineers begin at their own 23. Quincy Wilson. A powerful runner. He's out to the 29-yard line. I tell you. Quincy Wilson runs hard. He delivers the blow, but he's not the only guy. K.J. Harris has been running for arm tackles as well. They've got the whole package going. They've got their own Pony Express going right now, Craig. And let me tell you what's got it going on is that offensive line at West Virginia, but the backs have definitely sent a message that they're going to run you over during the way. Here's a deep ball, and it is incomplete. Intended for Chris Henry. Eric Green had the coverage. And, and, you know, this is just showing you again right now that West Virginia is not going to sit back. They're running the football, which has really brought up Virginia Tech's defense. Rasheed Marshall, he's going to throw the football. Yeah, he's taking his shot. They will normally try at least one deep ball a quarter. We've seen one already, but they'll probably come back. They haven't really gone after Green very much. They've gone after Hall. Well, he might have gotten away with a little bit of a push-off there as yep. he tried to shed Eric Green. Marshall out of the gun. On third down and four. He pulls it down and runs and has a first down. Then he got belted. But the forward progress to the 34, Eric Green said hello at the 34-yard line. A gain of six. Green can't fill his arm right now. Yeah. That's one of them stingers in the neck where he comes out. Hey, again, look at the presence of Mina Marshall. He doesn't get flustered, get the first down. Oh. In their last game against Rutgers, and Green still a little sore. Rasheed Marshall went over 1,000 career yards in rushing. Only Major Harris in the 1,000-yard rushing club among West Virginia quarterbacks all time. Hank, uh, we've all been there, Craig. You come up and hit somebody, or you're running the ball, you get hit, and immediately you feel that pain shoot down your arm and you kind of go numb momentarily yeah so right now that property management major he needs to he needs to properly manage that shoulder blade area <laughs> he needs to go get a couple of aspirin <laughs> hey doc i'm hurting they are a little bit more thin than usual the secondary two green starting tonight because garnell wilds is out with an e injury right up the middle 
Wilson, the ball carrier, it appeared the ball came out, but he was whistled down by contact. At the 38, a gain of four for Wilson. How did you do, Craig? I think you played against his dad in a Super Bowl, did you not? Yeah, I did. And, I, and, and about about the only, uh, all I remember is, is them running past me, sacking the quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> no blitz pickup? <laughs> no, no. Dad, Otis Wilson, the former Chicago Bear, played against Craig's Patriots in the Super Bowl in 86, correct? Brandon Manning made the tackle on Quincy Wilson, but that's 13 more. Let me, let me put it to you this way. I remember his dad one time tackling me. I tried to twist his shoe off his foot. <laughs> I wouldn't have hurt him. <laughs> well, there's no twisting on this thing. You, you come up to face Wilson. Wilson is going to finish the run. He's going to deliver a blow. He's delivered 77 yards already tonight. And just 14 carries. He's also scored a touchdown. His dad, Otis, still lives in Chicago. But Otis grew up here in the state of West Virginia. We talked about they don't have many prospects, but Quincy's from Weirton, West Virginia, led Weir High School to a state championship. He looked around a little bit, but he was intrigued by playing here for his home state university. He was in a pretty good class coming out of high school for running backs. William Green, T.J. Duckett, Julius Jones, among the other top running back recruits. Rasheed Marshall shoved out of bounds, a loss on the play, back to the 48-yard line. Tell the key, the middle linebacker, junior from Columbia, Maryland, chased out Rasheed. But going back to Wilson, did you take a look at what he did his senior year in high school? More than 3,000 yards rushing, 47 touchdowns as a high school senior. He told me it really wasn't fair. I was about 205 pounds, and I just ran over everybody. He's still running over people. Yeah, it's still not fair. <laughs> Third down and eight. West Virginia with under four minutes left in the half. Leading Virginia Tech 14 and nothing. This is a Hokie team averaging 45 points per game. Marshall has a man open. Caught first down. Travis Garvin out of bounds at the 36-yard line. First catch of the night for the senior who missed their last game against Rutgers. And look at the timing of this. M Marshall steps, plants, the ball's on its way as soon as the receiver made his cut. And that is something they hadn't seen this season. Their passing attack was not good. Coming into the ball game, leading receiver, 11 grabs. Garvin playing with a very heavy heart. He had to leave the team before that Rutgers game. There's Wilson again. His cousin, who really was like a brother to him, they had lived together and been close their entire lives, was shot and killed in their hometown of Bradenton, Florida. So Travis left the team and did not play in the game against Rutgers. There you are, left guard, nothing special, sexy about this play. 76 has done this all night, Jeff Burke. Look at the push he has, and what it does is it just moves to chains. It sets the tempo. Little plays like that, sending a message to that defense. I tell you, the message they're sending is that we're pounding the heck out of you. They caught Virginia Tech not quite lined up. Marshall keeps on a quarterback sweep and goes down to the 30. They'll need four more on third down. And the time becoming a factor now. Remember, each team has already burned two timeouts, so they can stop it once each. And we're under three minutes left in the half. Physical, physical, physical. I go back to the Miami game. West Virginia believed that they were more physical than Miami in that ball game. And it has carried over into this one. The very well be four down territory for West Virginia. They hope they don't need to go for it on fourth down. They'd like to pick it up right here. After the third, Marshall in trouble and throws in the direction of Wilson. Coles Colas had him around the knees. He did get it off. It's an incomplete pass. It'll be fourth down and four from the 30. And we'll see what Coach Rodriguez wants to do. Will he try a long field goal? Yes, Kick he it. will. Kick it kick it you know why you if you make this field goal you get up by three scores here well, you get up by i'm going to give you a different opinion of this thing <laughs> oh wow you've got virginia taking the tank right now and, and, and they're straight to their that's right man and we know they're not for anybody in america it's, it's not a gimme on fourth down you got you know three four yards to go here so what just turn the ball over and play defense ah get the third score make them have to score three times to beat you you're gonna be right but i'm just telling you i'm nervous about it <laughs> high snap cooper's kick is not long enough then off to the right